Microphone polar patterns. Microphones are transducers. That means they change one type of energy into a different type of energy. What they change is the air pressure um, caused by sound, and they change it into an electrical voltage um, by moving. A polar pattern talks about the direction that that microphone is effective at converting sound pressure. So the first polar pattern I'm going to talk about is called cardioid, and it's what is in most dynamic microphones like an SM57, SM58, I5, D6. Um, and what this does is it's very efficient at converting sound pressure waves from one direction. So in this example here we've got our singer at the front who's symbolized by the blue head and he's in front of the microphone. That sphere is uh, representing the polar pattern of the cardioid microphone. So as you can see the sphere is bigger at the front and as we get towards the back of the microphone it is reducing in size. So what this tells us is this microphone is very good at converting sound from in front but it's also not very good at converting sound from the back. Where this would be very useful is where you have more than one sound in a room or on a stage. So you're trying to record or capture the voice from the singer, but you'll want to ignore the voice from the audience behind it. Um, this type of polar pattern mostly picks up sound from the front. It effectively rejects sound from behind, and it does pick up some sound from the sides, uh, which can be, can be an issue when we're dealing with live sound on stage, where there's lots of different sound sources, but we'll talk about that later. So that's cardioid. The next type is figure eight. So figure eight is um, available at college in a couple of different microphones, mostly the more expensive um, condenser types like the SC4400, the NT2000, um, I think that's it, yeah. And what this is good at is it's good at capturing, or not capturing, uh, converting sound from one side and from the opposite side, so from the front and the back. This means you could capture two things with that microphone at the same time. So if you had two singers, you could capture them. If you had a pianist who uh, was also a singer, so in this situation you would have a singer on one side and the piano strings on the other side, you could capture that. Um, if you had two guitarists or two acoustic instruments facing each other, um, you'd be able to convert those sound pressure waves into electrical voltage and it would be effective at that. Um, another really good thing about figure eight microphone is that it rejects sound from the sides. So it's not good at picking up sounds from the side. So in this scenario, I've got two singers and a guitarist. Now if I wanted to capture uh, the sound from the two singers, but I didn't want any spill or bleed from the guitar to get into the microphone, then I could place the guitarist on the side of that microphone and then the microphone would ignore the sound coming from the guitar. The next type um, is omnidirectional. Again, this is available on the NT2000, the SC4400 uh, microphones at the college. Omni means all, so it's all directional. It means it picks up sound from every direction. Now, this is very good if you want to capture the sound of an environment like the whole sound of the band in a room, every single sound, not rejecting anything. This is very good for that. Um, it's very bad, obviously, if you're trying to capture only one sound. So only use omnidirectional if you want to capture the whole environment. Um, yeah. So here are the diagrams. So I've talked about um, cardioid, omnidirectional, and figure eight. And they're mostly displayed in diagrams like this. Um, I've added a pink arrow in the center to show you the direction of the microphone. And what these diagrams show you is a 360 degree circle uh, of all of the direction that are coming in, uh, that the sound could be coming in to that microphone. And if you have a look on the inside, it shows you how much quieter the signal will be if it is not at 
if it's at different directions. So for example, if we look at the omnidirectional microphone on the left hand side, it doesn't matter which direction the sound is coming from, that microphone will pick it up at the max volume. So that's a zero dB line, which is on the outside. If we then go into the center diagram, we've got the cardioid, uh, also known as unidirectional for one direction. And what we have here is at zero degrees, which is at the top of the diagram, the, the, the diagram is at its biggest. That means it will capture sound with at zero dB. That means it won't be any quieter. As we start coming down to the sides, for example, 90 and 270 degrees, we can see that there is more than a 5 dB drop in volume. That means the signal captured will be quieter by at least 6, 7 dB. If we then go all the way to the back at 180 degrees, we can see that the signal drop is below minus 25 dB. That means there's going to be a difference in the signal captured from the front and the back of the microphone of of negative 25 dB. If we then look at the last diagram, the bidirectional or figure eight, bi means two, so it's two directions or figure eight, um, we can see that's very effective at zero degrees and at 180 degrees, the top and the bottom. On the side, 270 and 90 degrees, it has a drop, a signal drop of more than 25 decibels. That means it's going to be quiet. The sound coming in from the sides is going to be quieter than the sides uh, than the sound arriving at it from the front and the back. I'm going to talk about one more type, and that's called supercardioid. So it's like a cardioid, only it's angled more towards the center, and it does accept some sound from the back, but it has two rejection points at 150 degrees. That means it's not very good at picking up sound from 150 degrees. Where this is good is in a situation that we see time and time again in live music, where, let me go to the diagram, here we go. Here we have a singer, and they have two monitor wedges on their left and on their right hand side. We also have other sounds on the left and on the right coming from the bassist and the guitarist. This microphone here, if it was a cardioid microphone, some of the sound from the um, left and the right would be entering the microphone if this was a cardioid mic because it doesn't reject sounds from the sides too much. However, with a super cardioid, it will reject more sound from the left and the right, but it will accept some sound from the back of the microphone, which is why the monitors are, sh are positioned not directly in front of the singer, but sideways uh, at an angle at the 150 degrees null points that we had in this diagram here. So that's microphone polar patterns.